Hey y'all, it is Brita here for The Happier Attorney, and this is the channel where we talk about flat fees and mindset and personal development for attorneys. And today we're going to be talking about, are your expectations of a close rate completely out of whack? Okay. You can probably imagine that just based on this, the title of this video that they are. Okay. So I totally get it that it, when you want someone to hire you, or worse, you need someone to hire you, and they don't, it's disappointing. It is confusing, like, why are they in my office? And especially when you know you can help them. When I talk to attorneys how, about the initial consultation, there is a whole way in which you can improve your close rates. You can prepare uh, your potential clients uh, for a high, what appears to be a higher price at the beginning. You can weed clients out who are just the tire kickers. We go through all of that in the Happier Attorney Flat Fee Program. We, I also have a monthly initial uh, workshop that if you want information, get on my newsletter at thehappierattorney.com. However, we attorneys don't know much about sales. And I have taken a lot of sales trainings, and sometimes I have heard some things that are just absurd. Um, I heard one sales uh, training program that said, you know, if you're not closing 90%, you're doing something wrong. Well, that's absurd, okay? <laughs> that's absurd. And then, and that was to get you in their sales training, and then you get in their sales training, and they're like, oh, if you're closing 50%, you're doing great, okay? So I think a lot of times we attorneys just don't know what is a reasonable expectation to have for a close rate. And I can tell you it's going to depend on the facts. I'm an attorney. What did you think it was going to be? Of course the answer is going to be it depends. But really, it's going to depend on the facts. So you can improve your odds by you know, having great service and making sure that you're taking some of the risk away from the potential client and getting rid of the tire kickers. Again, I teach all of that. But it's going to depend on also your practice area. If you are in a emergency practice area, say family law, criminal law, where people need help and they need it now, you're going to have a higher close rate because they, they don't have time to shop around. And I think that, quite frankly, that that's a misperception as well, that people have, uh, you know, nothing, nothing better to do than just shop around all of the attorneys in town. People don't. And if they like you and you, they don't think that um, you're going to do a bad job, they're probably going to hire you, okay? However, there are always going to be those people who don't hire you for whatever reason. And here's the thing, you'll probably never know the reason. They might say it is a money issue, which sometimes it is, but that's an easy way for people to get off the hook because you're not generally going to question that. Okay. So in other practice areas, you're going to have to do a lot more prep work. If it's not an emergency practice area, say, um, transaction works, work, estate planning, something like that, where people have the perception that they have time. I, I can do it later. It's fine. I mean, how many of us attorneys don't have our estate plan updated or done at all? Okay. We fall into the same trap. So part of the process is going to be educating them and that can be on your website, that can be videos, that can be in the initial consultation, to get them to try and understand what the real risk is if they put this off, if they don't do it. They're in your office for a reason. They took the time, they spent the money on the initial consult, which please always charge. They're there. You know, don't delay. And what is the cost of delay? They're putting themselves at risk. They're putting their business at risk. They're putting their family at risk. And here's the thing. I like to hit what I know to be the objections, whether they voice them or not, head on. 
just like in litigation, if we have bad facts, you want or a, our clients done something bad, you want to be the first person to mention it. You want to take the sting out of it. You want to control the narrative. So you know, or you should know if you've never thought about it, no one has ever woken up and gotten out of bed and said, I want to spend a lot of money on an attorney today. They don't. I, I have an acquaintance of mine who's... Um, knows me well enough to be honest with me about it. She says, I know I need to get my estate plan done, but you know what? I'd rather go on vacation than spend the money on an estate plan. That's how people are thinking. Of course, the, what we do, you know, it's, they're not getting a shiny ball. They're not getting a, you know, a new car, a vacation, whatever. So of course people don't want to do it. So you have to get them over that hump to have them try and understand why it's in their best interest to do something they don't want to do, okay? Why do we have insurance on our house, okay? Well, you have to if you have a mortgage. But even if you don't, why do you have it? The chances of it going up in a fire are slim to none. You have it because the consequences, if that thing happened, would wipe you out. They're that bad. That's why you pay the darn bill every single month. Okay. Same thing here, but people don't think of it like that. So it's our job to help communicate. Really, this is part of adulting. <laughs> this is part of having a business that I know you don't want to spend this money. Here's why you do want to spend it because the consequences, if something happened, which estate planning, it's going to happen. We're all going to die. It's going to happen. The consequences would be that bad. Okay. If you have a community that is into DIY or the cheap, you've got to hit that head on. Why is cheap the most expensive? It's generally always more expensive at the end of the day. And we don't get a second shot. Legal work generally is, you know, once something happens, you can't go back and fix it, all right? So yes, it's going to be a little bit more expensive. Here's why, okay? Our, again, getting back to the close rates. I have talked to attorneys after attorneys who are like, I am really having a problem in my initial consultations, closing, da 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 And I said, well, okay, well, let's, what, what's your close rate? Oh, it's only like 60%. Okay. So when you Google it, <laughs> Google it, look on AI. That's an amazing close rate. If you, for a service industry, have a close rate of 50%, that is exceptional. If you're at 75, 90, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, raise your prices, <laughs> okay? It's almost too high. If you're, if you're not getting that many objections, it's too high. So if you are at like 50 and you're like, I'm failing. No, you're not. No, you are not failing. And there are certainly ways that you can improve it. Push it up a little bit. Push it up a little bit. Okay. And if you want help with that, get in contact with me. Okay. Just the, my, the link to the website's below, happieratorney.com. It, we'll do an assessment, figure out what's going on, okay? But let's have some realistic expectations, okay? Because how you think dictates everything. And anyone in sales, anyone will tell you, and sales is kind of an art, but anyone in sales will tell you, look, it's a numbers game. And when someone says no, you just move on. You don't sit there and dwell on it. You move on. Now, if there's something to learn, learn it. If there's a way to improve, improve. But don't take it as a personal rejection that, you know, oh, they don't like me. I'm doing something wrong. Much less we go into, oh, I'm failing. I, I'm never going to get this practice off the ground or, or whatever. Okay. And then how do you show up the next time? You show up defeated. You show up low energy. You're like, mm -hmm. like Eeyore. Nobody wants to buy anything from Eeyore. Okay, so 
move on. I know no one likes to feel rejected, okay? I get that. You don't have time for that nonsense. Next, okay? And remember, you know, how you show up during that initial consultation is critical. Needy, N-E-D-D-Y, needy is creepy. And I know that you're like, I hide it well. Okay, no, you don't. No, you don't. When you need that person to hire you, it comes through. It does. So really watch your energy on these initial consultations, okay? And again, there is an art to this. There are lots of different things that you can do to increase the odds that you get the right people in the door and that they are ready to go and that they hire you for the price that you are charging, okay? If you need more information, click below, okay? So, but let's get your expectations in check, all right? Okay, take care. Bye, y'all.